When is a good time to start? What to plan for? How much training? What the road is like? What is the competition structure like? What is it like starting as a kid versus starting as an adult in figure skating? Stay tuned to find all the answers. Hello guys and welcome back. We have a very special video this week. We're gonna talk about the progression of skating and how people start from the very bottom and get all the way up. Well, hi everybody, I'm Paula Wagner and uh, for those of you that don't know me, now I'm directing a figure skating program in Kissimmee, Florida with my Just friends Faye and Bruno. <laughs> I was a ballet dancer and I got involved in skating many, many years ago. I was from Chicago. I met lots of coaches in Chicago, Debbie Story, Cindy Caprell, and they got me on the from the studio to the ice. So let's start from the beginning. I have a kid and he dreams of figure skating, or I dream of, of them figure skating. What are the first steps? Well, how do I even start? Well, the first step is to, if you have a child or if it's yourself, I would suggest going to a public mm -hmm. skate. See if you like it. Then if you like it, register for your rinks classes. I would encourage you to sign up for classes that are Learn to Skate USA classes because those classes use the foundational skating program of US figure skating. If you have, let's say, if you have a child and she wants to skate, she's going to tell you she wants to skate. Mommy, can you take me back to the rink? Mommy, I don't want to leave the ice. Sometimes we have children that are crying. They don't want class to end. Do they want to be at the rink every day? Then I think you've got a figure skater. So, or a hockey player. So let's get them to the rink. Let's have them skate as much as possible. Um, and then try to find the very best coach you can for them when they start taking private lessons. Desire, I think, is 99% of it. And talent's probably 1%. And like as adults, look at you guys. You guys came in, you started and learned to skate, and now you're like, YouTube, you're YouTube stars. <laughs> <laughs> you're stars of stage and screen. Now we live here in the ring. Now you live here. So I mean, like anything in life, when you have a passion for it, you're going to want to do it. Skating at a very serious level does require an amount of discipline, an amount of commitment, both financial and time, and. In, you know, you want to have some of the, some talent to go with it if you want to go to the very, very highest level. The other thing I would encourage is um, to get some skates. Even if they're the $89 Rydell entry-level skates, skates make a big difference. There's an ideal age for people to start skating or it doesn't really matter? For, for someone that really wants to go to the top, right? Like really wants to pursue as a career, let's say. It depends on the child. You know, everyone progresses at a different rate. We have children as young as three. Um, so there are some three and four year olds that are able to be on the ice the whole time and have good attention and can be without mommy or daddy mm -hmm. for that time, and some children can't be. What's the oldest age did you see a skater star that still made it to like, in, say, international well, level? Well, Kala, Kala, I don't mean offense by this, is a great uh, example of someone mm -hmm. who started skating later and went to the Olympics as an older skater. What, what, do you know what age she started? No, no. <laughs> but she could tell you that. But she was, she was older and she had success quite late in her athletic career. We're going to insert, we're going to ask her. But Kala is a great example of perseverance. If somebody starts skating as an adult, yeah, young adult or older adult, what's the avenue there for them? Like what is in store for them? What there can is they a do? whole avenue of adult testing structures through U.S. figure skating and also adult competitive structure through U.S. figure skating. And there is what we have an adult committee as part of U.S. Figure Skating, and they do an amazing, amazing job coming up with new and inventive competitions, ways for adults to skate, and they do adult camps. I think the adults have a lot of great areas. So if the adults want to go competitive, they still have that opportunity. They still can, yeah. I mean, I have to tell you, adult nationals there are some really good skaters. Guys, if you're enjoying these, make sure to subscribe before we go to the next question.
At which point would uh, skaters, doesn't matter young or old, generally start to compete? In Learn to Skate USA, you want to go through the Learn to Skate USA structure which will equate to the competition. A Learn to Skate USA has competitions, a competition structure, so they can begin as little as snowplow, as young as Snowplow Sam, which could be four or five. And then once you graduate into the test structure of US figure skating, you will want to join a figure skating club. And then through that club, you can sign up for test sessions. The level that you're focusing on is the level you compete. And your skating director and your Learn to Skate coaches will help guide you. They'll say, oh, we're having a, competition here in Orlando, Florida, or we're doing one in Miami. It's our job to help educate the parents. Yeah. And what about adult skaters? Is it the same that can start really There's early? an adult skating track as well, and you can, again, uh, do uh, start as a beginning adult and compete upwards. And we have something called adult nationals, which is something you guys should probably think about <laughs> getting into. I always like to tell skaters, Everything counts mm -hmm. from your very first competition. We do pre-preliminary, preliminary, pre-juvenile, preliminary, pre juvenile, intermediate, novice, junior, senior. And once you're senior, that's when you're making kids. Once junior, U.S. championships, uh, you can go to the junior and you can go to the senior level, meaning junior tests, uh -huh. senior tests, but you have to qualify. Mm -hmm. So you have non-qualifying competitions and you have qualifying competitions. What's the difference? Non-qualifying will not qualify you for... For anything. Well, <laughs> <laughs> non-qualifying, I would say, why don't we call that an experience-laden competition. Mm -hmm. And qualifying will, is what you do to qualify for the next level. For instance, regionals is a qualifying competition will qualify you for sectionals, which will qualify you for championships. Depending on your placement, you will be invited to become part of the international circuit or the mm -hmm. Grand Prix circuit. That's going to help give you exposure, international experience, and then the points and your performance will be tracked. U.S. Figure Skating has a department called high performance and are very aware of the development of our young athletes. Mm -hmm. The old days when I first started, we only had regionals. And then we'd have, let's say, the top four juniors went to sectionals and the top four juniors went to championships. And on, now they've recently changed the process over the past couple of years. They mm -hmm. do also what they call national camp system or national qualifying system where they, skaters can go, they have designated competitions around the country. These skaters may choose to go to those competitions. Their results are tracked in points and that can also qualify you. Mm. So they've really done a great job giving skaters more opportunities. They do a good job judging the skater on more than just that one nice. program. It's a whole package. Everyone can have a bad skate. When they already decided, like, we're going to get serious, we really want to train, we want to get whatever, national, international Olympics. These children, how much would they train typically per week, per day? Um, I've heard different things from different skaters. Um, I've heard some skaters say, we on I only skate uh, in the mornings because schoolwork is very important. And, yet, and then some skaters are are homeschooled and will spend the day at the rink. So that kind of depends on the philosophy of the parents and the skater. Um, but both models are successful? Both models are successful. I mean, look at Nathan Chen. I mean, he's in, I understand, medical school or pre-med. So he's a great example of someone who's pursuing a high level education and is at the same time yeah. an unbelievable skater. Whether they're homeschooled or whether they're I'm um, just skating in the morning. Would they train every day of the week? I would say so. I'd say five, six days a week, yeah. Then they supplement with conditioning, ballet, uh, maybe jazz, stretching, gymnastics, um, ballroom, often, especially for ice dancing, mm -hmm. um, theater. Those are the kind of categories I'd encourage. I like how my Russian friends do it. My friends, um, I have a lot of Russian friends, um, and I respect the way their skaters look. 
So I remember saying them to my friend Oleg Vasiliev years ago, how am I gonna get my skaters in Chicago to look like that? He said, well, from the very beginning of skating, for every on ice session, mm -hmm. we do two off ice. Our, our US skaters will go through the structure. They're going to graduate from Learn to Skate USA, or a coach may meet them and say, I think your daughter's got a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. I'd like to work with her privately, okay. And that coach will know, okay, now we've got to get her started to take her moves test. She's gonna take her pre-preliminary moves. She's gonna take her pre-preliminary freestyle. I need to get her an ice dance coach. I need to get her a ballet coach. I need to get her a co So I always tell the parents there's only one captain of the ship. Skating has progressed. We've got jumps, spins, moves in the field. Ice dance, you guys are doing ice dance. Um, some of people are starting to do pairs. They're doing solo dance. We've got the Excel track. We've got a million different avenues for skaters. We've got showcase. We've got theater on ice. We've got synchronized skating. I feel that it's a plus if you're with a program that's really stressing quality of skating. Anytime you skate, whether it be on public skate or your free, free skate lesson and you're not pursuing quality, it's not going to help you progress. Off ice or on ice. If I were a parent, I would expect to pay for my child's training. It, it is not an inexpensive sport. Anything you want to commit to is, is not inexpensive. If I want to take five Pilates classes a week, that's not cheap. I mean, mm. yeah, you know. When skaters are at a higher level for the U.S. system, does uh, U.S. figure skating sponsor their national teams and international teams? They will get something called the envelope. And the envelope is uh, help that's dispersed to selected athletes and selected teams. They will receive some sort of stipend in the envelope. But the amount of what it costs to train a skater at a very elite level will vary on the area of the country you live on, mm -hmm. in the coach you're working with, the program you're working with, it has a lot of variables. But the training is all paid by the skater, or the parents? The pa parents, the, yes, oh. the skaters predominantly, I would say. And then they have a supplement with the envelope. Kids get sponsors um, at a young age, and um, fundraising. Mm -hmm not-for-profits like we have here at Florida Ice. We have uh, not-for-profit. We started to help the kids. And, and so there are, other, there are other ways to pay for it. Can they make a living figure skating? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, they can. They can do that by joining shows. Mm -hmm. And um, they can get endorsements as a higher level athlete. And they can coach. There's many avenues that they can still derive an income from. Mm -hmm. So I think the reason to do it is because you love it. Mm -hmm. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, you just love it. This was great info and we definitely learned a lot of new stuff today. If you also found this video helpful, make sure to share it with friends, subscribe to our channel so that we can grow and share our information with more and more skaters or potential new skaters. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you next video.